here is a slight derivation from the problem that I just did before. Uh, this involves Newton's second law of equals ma. And let's read the problem. Uh, we have now a table that has friction. Before I did the same, very same problem before, where the table did not have friction. Uh, it, with a pulley on each side, and um, there's a one kilogram mass placed in the middle. And there's two strings attached on each side, and each is hung over a pulley. A four kilogram mass is attached to the left side of the string, and a two kilogram mass is attached to the right string, and find the acceleration. And let's also add to that that the friction, mu, is equal to 0 0.5. So there's a coefficient of friction between the table and the mass placed on it. In this case, that would affect the one kilogram mass. To help us understand what this looks like, let's draw a little diagram here. So here we have a table. We place the one kilogram mass on the table, let's call this M1. Then we have strings attached to both sides. We have a pulley on both sides. So here's another pulley. There we go. String goes over the pulley, like so. And on the left side, we have a mass called this M2. And on the right side, we have a mass called this M3. And let's say the one mass M1 is equal to one kilogram. The M2 on the left side, that's equal to four kilograms and the mass on the right side is equal to two kilograms. And do not realize that there's a friction, mu equals to 0 0.5. So mu is a symbol that we use for the coefficient of friction, and it's equal to 0 0.5. How will that affect the problem? Okay, we're going to use F equals ma. In other words, a, if we rearrange the equation, is equal to F over m. And of course, when we do a problem like this with multiple masses, we want to consider the net force acting on the whole system and divide that by the total mass of the system. And just as before, since there's three masses, the total mass of the system will be m1 plus m2 plus m3. And now all we have to do is figure out what the net force is on the system. Drawing all the forces acting on the system, we realize that for m1, there's a force of gravity pulling down, m1g, and of course, Newton's third law then dictates that there's an equal and opposite force pushing in the opposite direction, the table pushing back, um, the normal force, which is equal to m1g um, in magnitude, of course, not in direction. m1g is a negative direction, the normal force is in positive direction, but at least they're equal in magnitude, and of course, they would cancel each other out. But since there's friction between m1 and the table, there will be a friction force. Also realizing that the left mass is bigger than the right mass, the whole object or the whole system will accelerate to the left in this direction. So that will be the assumed direction of the acceleration. And we're going to assume that this is then the positive direction, just to help us solve the problem. By definition, we'll call that positive. Now the friction force will try to oppose that. So the friction force will be in the opposite direction. So this is the friction force, F force sub fr as I write it. I don't know if you can tell. And by definition, the friction force is always equal to the normal force times acceleration, or not times the coefficient of friction. So it's equal to n times mu. And since n is equal to m1g, we could write the friction force to be equal to m1g mu. That represents the friction force pushing to the right as the whole system is trying to accelerate to the left. So those are all the forces acting on m1. The force acting in M2 is the force of gravity pulling down, M2g. And then, of course, there's the normal, not the normal force, but the tension in the string pulling back up. But since that's part of the system, we're not going to consider that. Only external force is acting on the system. And then over here, we have M3g pulling down. Again, we ignore the tension here because the tension in the string is part of the system. We don't have to consider that. So now we realize that there are three forces that are affecting the acceleration. We have the M2g force right here, which aids acceleration. That's what's causing acceleration. We have the friction force right here, which opposes acceleration. And then we have the M3g right here, which also opposes the acceleration. So therefore, the net force will be this force minus the other two that oppose it. So if we want to write that in here, that becomes M2g, which aids acceleration, minus the friction force, which is M1g mu, and minus this force, which is M3g 
we extend the line out a little bit more like that. And so that now becomes the equation that is derived from using Newton's second law to solve for the acceleration of the system. So the difference is we now have a third force, right here, the third force, I kind of switched the, the order here, the third force, the friction force that also opposes acceleration to contend with. Now we're going to plug in the numbers. So this is equal to m2, m2 is equal to 2 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared. I forgot the dots, not very good there. All right, minus m1, now m1 is a 1 kilogram mass, um, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the coefficient of friction, in this case is 0 0.5, so there's the friction force that's retarding acceleration or fight, fighting against acceleration. And then we have the third force, that's also minus, because it also opposes acceleration, m3, which is 2 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Make that look more like a k for kilograms. And of course, all that is divided by the sum of the three masses. m1 is a 1 kilogram mass. m2 is a um, 4 kilogram mass. And M3 is a, um, I need a plus here, plus a 2 kilogram mass. All right. Now all we have to do is solve that with our calculator. M2, I'm missing something. I made a mistake. I don't want to do that. M2 is a 4 kilogram mass. I was confused with the 2 there. This should actually be a 4 kilogram mass. Otherwise, this thing is not going to accelerate. So we have a 4 kilogram mass, so that makes 2 times 9.8 minus uh, 9.8 times 0.5 equals, and then divide that by the sum of the masses, which is 7 kilograms, so divided by 7 equals. So in this case, the acceleration is going to be a little bit slower. Acceleration is equal to 2.1 meters per second square, at least that's my, what my calculator tells me. And if I remember right, the answer before is a little bit bigger. So with the additional friction force overcome, we end up with a slightly slower acceleration for the whole system. So that's how you do something like this with friction. We'll go ahead and show you many more of these types of examples because there's a lot of different ways in which this can be applied.